Hey, this is uh, Ryan Phillips here. Um, this is my game from tonight at the club against Jonathan Zavala. I had the black pieces. Um, feels like feels like Jay Z and I uh, play uh, been playing quite a bit lately. Um, we play a lot of blindfold games via text message, and I think I play them in the club like three. I don't know. I feel like every tournament we've been playing, um, so definitely uh, starting to get familiar with uh, each other's play a little bit. Um, so I had kind of trouble deciding what opening I wanted to play, and I ended up uh, playing the French Defense. Um, I believe this might be the first time I've played the French Defense in a rated game. And um, I guess the objective was kind of to take Jonathan by surprise. Um, but then I kind of forgot myself that we've actually played a blindfold game in the French Defense. Um, so I don't know if the surprise value was that great. I, I imagine it was still pretty decent. Um, but maybe uh, I wish I had kind of picked something that we, I hadn't played ever, something like the Perk or something. And um, this is also kind of my goal to be like more of a universal player. Um, definitely not trying to memorize chess, trying to come up with some creative ideas. Um, I think this game will be uh, a pleasure for uh, Paco to uh, watch. I kind of um, stole his, uh, his French defense idea uh, against the advanced French. So uh, without further ado, here goes the game. So it goes uh, e4, e6, d4, d5. And then uh, Jonathan opts for the advanced uh, French, which... Um, he played this again, our blindfold game also. Um, so I think if uh, Jonathan's watching this, I have two pieces of advice. One, um, maybe don't play your uh, the actual openings you plan on playing in games and blindfold games. Um, I think it's better to play something that's, uh, you know, he could play some, you could play normal chess and blindfold chess, don't get me wrong. Um, but maybe giving away yeah, your exact opening uh, that you plan on playing in, in long rated games isn't the wisest strategy. Um, when I play blindfold games, sometimes I'll play like a mainline opening that I play, but generally I try to deviate at some point uh, earlier than I normally would. Uh, two reasons. One, I don't want to just give away all my opening preparation. Um, but that's, uh, I think that's a distinctly um, different reason than the second reason, and I think this is, a, an, I think this is an important pot, uh, point in my opinion, is that in blindfold games you should play positions that you're not 100% familiar with. Uh, I think it just makes your calculating ability much better. It's, um, I guess it's kind of like a child who... Uh, who doesn't know how to read, but they've heard the same story so many times they can memorize a book. Um, that's kind of what playing blindfold chess is to me if you're just going to play the um, an opening that you've seen like a thousand times. So I try to deviate um, early, but not with bad moves. I try to deviate with just kind of like a sideline or something or or a different uh, move order or something. So at least I'm getting a different position to uh, kind of improve my uh, my calculating abilities or, and my visualization skills. So anyway, yeah, so we played uh, the advanced French, which is exactly what happened in the blindfold game. And then uh, here I tried to uh, take uh, Paco's idea of queen b6, uh, bishop d7, and bishop b5. Um, this was not like any kind of preparation. This was all just kind of spur of the moment. Um, if I had played anyone other than Jonathan, I'm sure I would have played something different. Um, but since John, like I said, we've been playing so much against each other, I just didn't want to break out another Sicilian. I thought about playing the elephant gambit, but uh, I think he's kind of... I played the elephant gambit against him in blindfold also. Um, again, though, I, I played the... I forgot that I had played the French against them once before in blindfold, so I kind of regret not playing the perk, or uh, or Royce has been kind of inspiring me to play the modern, or, uh, you know, so maybe I should have played one of those openings, although uh, the game turned out really well for me, so I can't can't be uh, too critical of my choice. Uh, so knight f3, and then on bishop d7, and then um, here I'm pretty much already out of, uh, out of theory. Um, I know my idea is to play bishop b5, and then I'm guessing like knight c6 in the course develop my king side at some point. Um, but I wasn't exactly sure what's the best way to do any of this. Um, computer's not showing a4 in the openings book, but I was actually kind of worried about this move. Uh, not like too worried, I just figured knight c6 was what I'd play and I'd be okay. Um, but then, uh, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll be okay, but the idea of getting my bishop to b5 um, doesn't really exist anymore. Um, which I guess isn't, you know, I wasn't say, thinking that that would be a terrible drawback for black or anything. I just figured, though, my idea was to play bishop b5, and um, at least uh, white stops that plan. So uh, it looks like black's position is dead equal or even uh, a very, very minute advantage already according to the computer valuation, which um, I think minus 0 0.02, you can't really, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, that's just dead, e dead equality. So um, I guess um, white didn't really like that too much, I guess. Um, but it looks like any other move is pretty, I guess other than bishop e2, it looks like pretty... Uh, level position according to the computer already. Um, so Jonathan played a3, uh, which is a very common line against the um, um, against the advanced uh, French, but I think maybe against bishop d7 
Um, it's not that great. Maybe uh, I guess 96 is better. I, I really don't know. Uh, we'll need someone who's like more of an expert on these lines to talk about that. Um, so I played bishop b5. And then um, apparently the computer likes bishop takes b5 a lot, which I wasn't aware of. I thought um, this continuation was supposed to be pretty good for black. Um, but apparently it's not as good as I thought. Um, Jonathan didn't take though. He played knight b d2, develop a piece. And um, I didn't really consider bishop takes f1 that strongly. I, of course, uh, considered it. Um, but I just figured ah, it, didn't, it didn't look that great to me to just take. Um, I didn't really see the purpose, I guess. Um, so I just continued my development with knight c6. Which I think, um, I think practically was a good decision. And I think Jonathan kind of started playing uh, too aggressively already with b4. I didn't really care for this uh, idea too much. Um, so I took, took. And then uh, my initial reaction was I wanted to play. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry. Um, before b4, I'm sorry, he played bishop takes b5. Queen takes b5, and now b4. Which, I, again, I thought that was too aggressive a move. Um, so I took, take. And uh, my initial reaction was actually to play a5, uh, b takes a5, um, knight g e7 for some reason. Um, but I didn't particularly care for rook b1. And then takes there, and um, I don't know, computer showing a little bit of an advantage for uh, for black here still, but I didn't I didn't really feel like it was necessary to uh, sacrifice a pawn here. And um, I don't know, I mean, uh, white's development's fine, so it's not like I'm getting great to, great compensation for the pawn in terms of development, I think. And the rook on b7 can be kind of a nuisance also, it felt like to me. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't fearful, of, like I was losing it, even uh, even though the rook on the seventh rank can sometimes be strong. I didn't think it was um, necessarily strong in this position, uh, but I didn't see anything too great for for black. And for some reason, my instinct, I didn't want to take the pawn right away. I'm not sure why. I wanted to develop a piece. Um, if I ended up playing a5, I wanted to develop a piece first. It just felt right to me for some reason. Um, but I ended up rejecting this whole line. I played on knight h6. Um... And I was, the whole point of knight h6, I was trying to stop um, bishop b2. Because after bishop b2, I thought a5 was, more, was stronger with the knight on h6 versus on e7. Because um, if the knight's on e7, it's blocking the bishop diagonal. So I thought with the knight on uh, h6, I was basically trying to stop bishop b2. Um, but Jonathan, I guess, uh, he ignored that nuance, um, or he didn't think that, um, that that was dangerous for him. And I think he played a really bad move already with bishop uh, b2. And then um, I thought a5 was just a natural move. Um, exploit the pin along the b-file. And um, just build up a lot of pressure on the a-pawn. Or on the uh, b-pawn, I'm sorry. Uh, and I think he played another bad move with bishop c3. Take, take. And then um, he has decided to grab the pawn. Uh, which maybe was... Uh, riskier than necessary. Um, and then he played queen a check. And uh, man, I'm really upset at myself for playing knight d8. I, um, my initial thought was to play knight d8 in this variation. Um, but then when I actually got this position, I considered playing king d7. And I just totally uh, chickened out, um, which is, this is really disappointing because this could have been like a brilliancy, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's like an ego statement to say something like that. But I, I thought if after King D7, if this works, that this is a real brilliant game. Um, this could, you know, to Jonathan's a good player, and um, he did make some inaccuracies in this game. But just to be able to play a move like King D7 is cool. And I spent about eight minutes considering this move, and I just couldn't. Um, I'll just show some lines I was looking at. And, uh, yeah, King D1 really bothered me. I didn't see a good defense against King D1. Uh, but because uh, queen a4, king e2, all right, so it's like that gets back to rook with interest. Um, so I guess I was too fearful of that. Also, I was thinking maybe like rook f1.
Apparently this 9F5 is... I didn't realize I had the time to play 9F5. Um, that's... So that's uh, a pretty big oversight. I didn't realize I'd have time to play something like this. Because like this mate threat on E2 is pretty uh, serious. Yeah, this really pisses me off that I didn't play King D7 because I really, I really did consider it for a while. It sucks that I missed it. Um, so of course this is a forcing continuation I have to, cont uh, have to be aware of. And it looks like, yeah, it just looks like this main throw on E2 is just nasty. And it's like I'm going to get the rook back at the very least, but the computer showing a, a mate here. Well, King F1 runs into, uh, uh, King C1 runs into Queen C2 mate, of course, and then this runs into, uh, Knight B1 looks forced. Yeah, this E2 square is just beautiful because uh, this knight on H6 is guarding the uh, G4 square, so there's no real way to defend this. Um, I guess you could try knight C3, um, but obviously just takes, and then it looks like um, looks like we're going down the same path. So, um, shoot, maybe I uh, too, too pessimistic. That this would work. I really, I really did want to play King D7. Um, I guess you can't be too upset when you win the game, um, but still, this kind of sucks. That I didn't play this because this would have been, uh, this would have been a beautiful game if I would have played King D7. Anyway, so I went with the chicken move of Knight D8, and then takes, takes, castle, castle. Rook B1, and then uh, here my initial reaction was I wanted to play Knight C6. This is my initial calculation, um, but I thought that this, I thought this would be okay for me at first. Um, I just thought, um, I thought if he took, um, I, this really I really learned a lot about chess just from this one game, just how weak this D4 pawn is compared to my position. Um, but it looks like it's probably too slow to exploit it. Um, I, it looks like g4 is a possible move to kick the knight at f5, so I can really only get one uh, one attacker on this square. Um, I mean, I can bring the king over, but by the time I do that, the white king gets there uh, faster. Um, and then also I saw rook c7. And then once I saw rook c7, I uh, basically stopped calculating this line. just thought uh, this leaves absolutely nothing for black. Uh, main point being that the uh, b1 square is protected by the knight. And then I really don't have any back rank mates anyway because the knight could always just go to f1. So this really doesn't do me too much good. So my initial idea of playing knight c6 after castle was no good. Um, so I kind of went with the backup option of queen e7. Um, I actually never considered the computer's recommendation of uh, of queen to c3. I never considered this square. Um, so like a chess blind spot or something. Um, anyway, queen e7 looks perfectly good. And then I think Jonathan started to implode uh, slowly. Um, not right away, but queen a7. I think this is an okay move. Um, knight f5, g4, knight h4. So sorry if I'm going over this variation quick, but nothing too too uh, too complicated or interesting is going on, I think. And then uh, Jonathan played g5, which I think is a mistake. Um, and then I saw that uh, the knight actually isn't even really threatened. If he takes, I take on g5. So let's just give a sample variation. Um, say I wasted with g6, which doesn't make too much sense, but. Anyway, if takes, uh, I take here, and I'm going to win either this knight or this knight. Um, so the only way to save this knight, for example, would be knight g2. Um, but then the knight on d2 still hangs. And so I gained a pawn. So I saw this, um, but I still thought it was good to bring the knight back to f5. It seemed uh, quite logical to me. Um, the knight was kind of out of play here, and oh, even though it's technically totally safe at the moment, uh, I just thought bringing it back was a good, good idea. Uh, then Jonathan made a terrible blunder with h4, and I said, well, okay, I gotta take the pawn, so I took there. Um, and then he played queen c5, and then uh, I probably played an accuracy here. Uh, I could take the queen, but I didn't want to um, get rid of the passed pawn. Um, the pawns on c5 and e5 actually seemed kind of difficult for me to attack uh, in the near future. Um, I mean, I knew they were probably long -term. 
Yeah, I didn't see a good way to um, kind of attack these pawns on c5 and uh, e5. And uh, I didn't like knight takes f3 that much either because I just thought after knight takes f3 back, um, I didn't really see what to do that was so great after this. Uh, so I probably played a slight inaccuracy back here with knight f5. Nothing, uh, nothing too dramatic. So takes, takes. And then uh, here actually Jonathan resigned, which I thought was a little premature. Uh, I thought he had something to play for still. Um, my idea was basically just to swing this knight on e7 to c6, a7, and then play b5. That was my main idea. Um, and then so I can get this knight from uh, d8 onto c6, and the knights would be protecting each other, and the pawn on b5 would be pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, you can't even really create a blockade on the with like knight b4 because the knight on c6 could just take. And then um, if rook takes, then uh, the other knight comes to c6. You know, of course, I put the rook on b8. And I, I think I should have time to do all this. And then the pawns, this pawn's tough to stop. And then, of course, I still have a pawn majority over on the king side. So I could create another pass pawn um, pretty easily, I think, with like h6. And then um, if white tries to guard the pawn with uh, f4, um, I should have time to just play h5 then. And then that becomes a pass pawn. Um, I'll be able to support it with g6 if... White plays g6, then I could just take, of course, and then I have the pass pawns on both sides of the board, um, which that should just be too much for, for White to handle. Um, so, you know, there's no no problem with Jonathan uh, resigning here. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe he didn't have to resign so quickly. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I was happy with this game, of course. Um, Jonathan's an extremely strong player, and uh, I never played a French defense before. So to have a crushing victory maybe makes me think I should play it more, and... Uh, I know there's some French players that I can't, I'm not sure if they'll, they'll be like real happy <laughs> for me or they'll be like, oh man, like, uh, I don't know if we want Ryan in our, uh, in our little club of playing the French, but uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be mo mainly happy and uh, maybe they even uh, took some ideas. I'm, I want to be modest because I never, I never play the French and I know a lot of players have devoted a lot of time to it, so I don't want to uh, come across as some kind of French expert because I'm far from that. Uh, but maybe there were some ideas that were interesting. Um, to me, there was a lot of ideas to me that were interesting as someone who doesn't play this very often. Um, I feel like there's a lot of tactics in the position. I feel like my pieces got developed very easily. I thought, especially the dark square bishop on f8. Um, after c takes uh, d4, it just felt like an, it felt like the piece was naturally developed. I never even had to move it. Um, his first move was a capture to win a pawn on b4, and um, it's really hard to think of a better first move of a piece than that, just to get in the game with tempo and, and win a pawn like that. and. Um, then I was able to castle the next move if necessary. Um, I guess my only regret in this game is not playing king d7. So it's, it's really strange. I'm playing tons of blindfold chess now. It's helping a lot. But um, I don't have that skill yet, and this is something I'm definitely going to try to work on. I don't have that skill where if I'm in the middle of a game, I just try to analyze uh, blindfold. I can't do that yet. If I start from the beginning of a game and go move by move and keep it in my head, then I'm fine. Um, but if I just start like in a, if I just start in this position, for example, I try to keep this position in my head, I, I'm having a lot of trouble doing that. So I think what I want to do is I just want to kind of give myself a random position, maybe at night or something, um, and then maybe go to sleep and see if I can recall in the morning or something like that. But I don't know if I want to do that because that seems kind of stressful and maybe, I don't know, that probably doesn't sound too good for my sleep pattern. But there has to be somewhere where I could practice um, just getting a random position in my head, especially something like this because this, is this isn't like a crazy, strange position. Like This is a very logical position. You're going to see something like this in a lot of chess games. Um, so I should be able to quickly visualize this in my head. Like take a look at the board, maybe five, ten seconds, and then boom, I should be able to start calculating in my head, which is which is the whole point I think of blindfold is mainly to um, calculate variations in, in your head as far as you can. And um, I guess uh, the people that are really good at blindfold chess, they think it's more they they don't make as many errors in their uh, it sounds like um, blindfold as if when they actually look at the board because when they look at the board sometimes they'll keep a piece in a certain square that after it's moved, but when, if you get good at blindfold, you don't make those mistakes. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, it seemed like a, it was a good game. Um, I obviously cannot complain, um, you know, winning so quickly with the black pieces. Um, I don't know, it's strange. I've been playing like Jekyll and Hyde, uh, it seems like, and I definitely want more consistent results. I'm, I'm upset this tournament, honestly. I really wanted to win this one. Um, I kind of feel like uh, at the club, I... Uh, I try my best, of course, but I haven't been putting forth, like, you know, in my mind, I understand that the club tournaments, while very important and prestigious and fun, they're not like the major uh, tournaments that I'm preparing for, like the National Opens, the uh, North American Open. They're not in that category in my mind. Uh, not that I don't respect them, and of course, I always want to do well. 
Um, but this tournament, I really just wanted to. I know I don't win these tournaments, so I just wanted to win one of them, and I was, I'm pretty upset I didn't uh, accomplish that that goal in this tournament. Uh, but hopefully, at some time in this year, I'll win uh, one or two of these club tournaments and kind of get a little bit more respect uh, as far as you know being one of the top players in, in the club. Um, but yeah, this was a, this was a fun game for me. I uh, learned a lot about the French. Um, I think Jonathan just made a crucial error of bishop b2. Knight h6, the whole point of that move was to prevent um, white from being able to play bishop b2. And um, I guess Jonathan just missed that nuance. And uh, the rest of the game was relatively straightforward for me. Uh, so anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, definitely still enjoying making these a lot. And uh, this is Ryan Phillips uh, signing off. Thank you.